Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at, at uh, Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about elder law. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. Their goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard, which means if they're in Northborough, they want to stay right here. As you know, I've got a great co-host with me, Chris Linquist, whose job is to find terrific guests um, who can appear on the show. Chris and I agreed, actually at the request of some folks, to make the next two shows be about who to vote for for selectmen. You have uh, four candidates running for selectmen. We've invited all four. We have two of them um, this morning. Chris will make introductions. We're going to ask everybody the same questions and ask him for answers. Chris, it's all up to you. Great, Arthur. So good morning, uh, Arthur. We have uh, Lisa Michelli with us uh, this morning, and she's uh, a candidate for the Board of Selectmen seat. And uh, we are thrilled to have Lisa here to kind of give her uh, a viewpoint uh, about, uh, you know, the town of Northborough and, and why she's interested in running for Board of Selectmen. So Lisa, we're going to jump right into these questions. Okay, are you ready to go? <laughs> yes, so I did. And I, can I give a little bit of information later on? Please. You know what? Sure. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead, Lisa, and, and, and uh, you know, give us a little intro. And, and Lisa, we're, we're, we're asking each candidate to, to respond in 10 minutes, in 15 minute slots. So you've got 15 minutes. OK, so if, if at the end we're out of time, I'm just going to go. We're out of time. And that's the end. OK, <laughs> thank you. Fine. Well, I want to thank you both for having this show today. I think this is wonderful and I think it's great for the audience because with COVID-19, we're all seniors that have been isolated pretty much and not able to get out and do things or or even find out what's going on in the world, let alone in North Grove. So I'm so happy to be here and I appreciate the two of you and, and the show. Uh, just a quick bit about myself is that um, I, I moved to North Grove 20 years ago to actually care for my father who was ailing. And um, he, um, he passed uh, probably four years after I moved to town. And I stayed here because I loved the town and I grew up in South Grove and went to school at Algonquin. But um, all the time that I was here, I noticed that, um, that there were things that I got myself involved in, in um, civically. And, um, and I've done an awful lot in terms of writing bylaws for the town and, and all of those things. So I don't know why my phone's ringing and ringing. This is the funny, fun thing about these Zoom meetings, right? <laughs> Sometimes like the rest of the world wants to intervene and you have to just kind of throw them away, right? Is my yeah. hair glad? Somebody tell me. That's right. Take the phone, throw it out the window, right? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I, I really wanted to, you know, give you a little background in what I do. And, and uh, my formal education is in business administration with a, uh, a major in accounting. So when we talk budget, budget stories, I'm pretty familiar with how all that works. So um, I guess the thing to do is go ahead and start. Well, nope, you asked me why I'm running. And I'm running because as a senior and as on a fixed income, my taxes are out of sight. And I can't imagine how much more we'd be able to spend on taxes. It went up last year for me, almost doubled. And uh, it was shocking. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm running. I also feel that we're an underserved population. Uh, we didn't even get a seat on the board at the um, um, see, senior moment. That proves what I just said. <laughs> um, well, at the, um, oh my goodness. That's okay. We're going to give you a pass on that. And that's it. And we'll have, and we'll have Chris ask you, the, ask you a question. Yeah, so, so Lisa, um, you know, what are, what are two or three items on your list of, uh, you know, important topics you think the town needs to address in the next, say, three years? And, and how would you address those uh, concerns? Oh, that's good. Because that's about all I have is three years. <laughs> I'm all for term limits. <laughs> and at this stage, I really need them. So addressing certainly the taxes. And, and as I started to say, that I think it's very important that the senior population be represented in and I've looked into a few ways of perhaps maybe getting a, a discount as a senior at certain ages and at certain income levels. And many towns do it. It's not new news. It's just that we have not really been that creative here. Um, I've actually worked on the senior work off program. And I know a little bit about that. And that's how Chris and I met. Uh, right. I worked with him. And, um, and so I think that that's really, that's my topic right now is the taxes. Other things would be uh, how we spend our money and how um, 
we could better spend it. And looking at the budget and seeing how things are, are purchased, um, I know I'm a, a, a great one for talking about our trucks. How come we have all these shiny trucks? And, and, and then I realized that, you know, we actually have the top of the line trucks. We don't have just regular trucks with the black bumpers. No, we have chrome bumpers. What are we doing with chrome bumpers and kind of a dirty job? I don't understand that. So I'm gonna start looking into that to see just how we can shave off some money for things like crosswalks and crosswalk lights. Uh, I know that's a big, big problem for a lot of the people who want to walk and certainly for the seniors who take your life in your hands when you go to a crosswalk. Well, th thank you. Now, it sounds like the next question that we were going to ask was one that you did, which was what specific skills and abilities will you bring to the town because of your work experience? So, Chris, I'm going to ask you to do number four. Yeah, let's, let's do four, Arthur. Uh, yep. And here's the question, Lisa. So, true or false? Northboro's property taxes are in line with the services that the town provides residents, including high quality public education and high quality town services, such as police and fire, the library and the senior center, the Department of Public Works, youth and family services, and parks and recreation. That's a one word answer, true or false, Lisa. I, I don't <laughs> but, but you can elaborate after you say true or false. I, is there an in-between between true and false? Of course. The in-between, because I think it's much more complicated than that. And that we have been doing a, a good job. Uh, I think we could do a little bit better job. I want to see more library activity and well, extended hours. And I've uh, heard just last night that those hours are going to be cut. Um, and that's a little questionable, because I think that that time was actually spent uh, Fundraising was done on a third party basis, so that you already have the money for that. I don't understand why that would even be a, a source of cutting. But um, so that's, that would be my maybe in between answer. Well, you're preaching to the choir about the library, obviously, Lisa. So uh, I'll, I'll go on to number four, five, okay, Arthur? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one. You're gonna do that one. That's go right. Ahead. This is the senior question, because that, because as you know, the show is kind of designed to be, to be focused on seniors. So the question is, how do you think town services to seniors should be changed or increased until a vaccine for COVID-19 is found? Because I think, it, it would, just as background, I think COVID-19 is uniquely affecting us, the senior population, and that'll continue to be the case is, until the vaccine shows up. I think you're absolutely right. We actually have two minutes left before you say goodbye to me. But in terms of COVID and, and staying inside, I think we, again, I don't think we've done enough one phone call to say, how are you doing? Uh, I don't think it's enough. I think we need to be able to open up some world for us because, you know, we think everything else gets taken away. Our skin gets a little saggy. Our brain gets a little muddled. <laughs> and now we can't even go outside and see our family and hug our grandkids. And I really think we need to do more what we need to do, I haven't, I haven't got enough investigation to be able to answer that with, with good uh, yeah. background for you. Sure. But I do know that, um, that the town meeting was a question, and I don't think we're ready for June uh, 22nd town meeting, and I don't think the seniors have been considered. And there was a senior by the name of Mary uh, DeSaltis, I guess, I'm not sure if I pronounced her name right, who's quite upset about it, that she doesn't feel that the meeting should be done and that anything has been thought about for them because... They have to be, in, if they go to bleachers, if they go to a school, where's the bathroom facilities? What are they gonna do with the microphone? We can't go outside our doors now. And then in two weeks, we're gonna be in a huge auditorium with 300 people. That doesn't make any sense. So um, I think that needs to change. And I do think we need to get better um, transportation. That's been a huge problem, I think, for many of the seniors, that they don't have a great transportation um, um, resource. So. I would check into that as well. Thank, thank you. On? Chris, Arthur? Yeah. up to you. So here's the, um, you know, this, there's no right or wrong answer to this question, but I think it is on a lot of people's minds, and that is, where should Northborough's town hall be located? Oh, that's great. Well, I'm, thank you for that one, Chris. <laughs> my, my one and only place is right downtown, right next to the Cumberland Farms and the fire, uh, the railroad tracks uh, for West Main Street. And the reason for that is it's already built. It will bring back life to the downtown area. There's not a town that doesn't have its downtown uh, offices downtown. And it's ready to go in a year. We've already, uh, you know, I've gone through the documentation. I've looked at it. We have 77 parking spaces. So the thought of no parking is not correct. I heard the other night that there's seven, $7 million worth of repairs, which I don't understand where that's coming from because I toured the building about 
uh, about January before COVID. And I didn't see $7 million worth of a problem. So I'd like to see paperwork that would substantiate that and uh, bring us back to where we belong downtown. Great, thank you. Now, Chris, I'm gonna let you keep going because you're, you're, these, sure. are, these are very town focused well, issues. You know, the next question is about the master plan, Lisa, and I'm sure you attended some of those master planning meetings and public forums. If you would advocate for any changes to the master plan, what would they be and why? Changes, I don't know, I don't understand the question. I, I saw what we wanted and uh, the big discussion was we wanted downtown vital, we wanted to move to the town hall downtown. Um, what we wanted, I liked. I mean, what I heard was that we weren't gonna get more sidewalks and we weren't gonna be taken care of in, on some of the things that we were looking for. That's questionable. So now we really need to put together um, a team that's going to implement all the things that the people wanted. We have a list of what people want. I think we need to follow it. Okay, great. And on the public education side of the town's budget, uh, Lisa, what are some key goals you would advocate that the town school committee address, say in the next two to three years? Well, I'm not, of course, I have a, a four-year-old grandchild, so I'm not as uh, up to what's going on inside the schools as I would have been when I raised my child. But I do know that the schools themselves need help. And I know that there's been a, a question at Proctor that had a mold issue that I don't believe it's been actually fixed. Uh, I know the schools themselves, we have great Lincoln Street School, that's a great model, but we have other schools besides Lincoln that need quite a lot of help. So I think I really want them to address some of that as well, because it's not just the education and the books, it's your environment. And um, I grew up in a, with an artist's father, and so the environment is very important to me as well. And uh, if, if there are any regional initiatives, uh, that's kind of a, a trend now is, is, you know, regional initiatives. You think that the town should pursue some of those with other municipalities in the area in order to be more cost efficient or e increase the quality of life for residents? And if so, what would those initiatives be? Um, that, I, I have not heard about doing that. I have heard about uh, changing the school structure that the first and second and third grade would be at one school and the fourth and fifth and sixth grade would be at another school and they would be able to share the teacher's resources better so they could, they could make savings that way. Um, I, don't, I don't know if regional for younger would work well because Algonquin, our tax base changes when the uh, student population changes and when South Grove student population lowers, our taxes go up and vice versa. And I don't know that we could actually do well with that type of a situation with younger children. But again, I, that's, I have not done a lot of work in the school area, so I can't speak with great authority on that. Okay. And yes, I'm noticing that we're doing great on, we're doing yeah. great on time. Ms. Mazzelli has been really cooperative, but I was wondering if you could go down to the, that COVID-19 question, let's, let's which may end up being yeah, the, the last question. question. Yep, so uh, how do you think the town has responded to COVID-19 in terms of public health? town services, and the economic health of the community, Lisa? Okay, well, the public health, it's a little concerning because we lost our, um, our health agent uh, probably in the second or third week of being uh, set inside from COVID. So we don't have, uh, we don't have a great deal of um, representation on the health side. Um, I think the people themselves have done well, and I think our age group certainly uh, is very compliant and stays inside and, and will use their masks, but they're very fearful because in a heartbeat, they could be in a hospital bed. And uh, between a hospital bed and a rehab center, I don't think I wanna go outside if that's my choice. So, um, and what the, has, do I feel the town has done well? I, I you know, I can't, I can't be critical because I am a little bit more um, ambulatory. So. I would like to talk to other people who have said that they have not felt supported. Mary was one of those people who actually on Facebook yesterday. And now, for, for the final question, I was actually gonna ask, what's the name of that dog that just walked by you in the back of the room? <laughs> that's the, now he's a senior as well. That's, he's 85 <laughs> in dog years, that's Moose. And poor Moose has got no joints left and he's just in hard, hard times. That's, okay. that's great. Well, Lisa, thank, Chris, thank you so much for putting this together. And uh, Ms. Maselli, thank you very much for being willing to do this. I think this is really important information and hopefully seniors will find this 
really valuable. Thank you. We're going to tune off right now. We're going to tune back in with another one of the candidates for selectmen. Thank you very much. Hi, folks, and welcome back to Frank and Mary here in Northboro um, with my co-host, Chris Linquist. As you know, we are now interviewing can the candidates for selectmen in the upcoming election. Chris is going to introduce the uh, candidate. We have a list of questions we're asking everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Rogers, for coming. Um, and Chris, who do we have? Yeah, so uh, this morning we have Scott Rogers. Uh, he's running for the Board of Selectmen seat. And uh, Scott, could you just please tell us a bit about yourself? Tell our viewers why you're running for Board of Selectmen and, uh, you know, just give us a bit of background about your, your qualifications. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for the opportunity to join you here this morning. So Scott Rogers, uh, on the ballot, you'll see it as Thomas Scott Rogers. I go by my middle name, but have to use the legal name on the ballot. I'm a current member of the Financial Planning Committee, been doing that for a couple of years. So that gives me the insight into our budgetary processes within town. Uh, stepping up my game uh, in this uh, season to uh, run for a seat on the select board. Um, my uh, background is I came to Northboro in, what was it, 95? Uh, after uh, uh, moving here with my wife, Mary, we've got uh, two kids that went through uh, the school system and have graduated, uh, one all the way through college. Uh, he's a chemical engineer, so a marvelous education that he received uh, through our school system. And my daughter is in her final year of nursing, uh, so she's looking to give back and follow her mother's footsteps a little bit in the, in the nursing career. Great. Uh, I, uh, I recently uh, uh, wrote a blog post to kind of like, you know, why am I running? Uh, uh, it was a little heartfelt in the mood that we find ourselves in today. I acknowledge that I was pretty much born into a position that, of privilege. It gives me a head start over others. Uh, of course, growing up in California State, Washington State, my education was paid for. Um, as a member of the U.S. Air Force, my salary and living expenses were paid for by tax uh, by taxpayers. And I walk through some of the things that even today, as a, I'm a, work for the University of Massachusetts Medical School, and so in that respect, my current salary is paid for by the taxpayers of the Commonwealth. So my my summary on that is well, why? Um, you know, I have a, a commitment to service, and quite frankly, I owe you, is, was, the, uh, was the statement I made on that. So that's the passion for community service and participation. Um, the timing uh, came for Board of Selectmen uh, in that Don Rand was not uh, running for re-election, so I, I stepped up to help uh, do my part for, as a member of the Select Board. That's great. And, and, and by the way, um, Mr. Rogers, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm especially interested in senior issues, but, but Chris Linquist's is interest is all, has been great in terms of his focus on community. So we've done a set of questions. He's going to be asking most of those questions, except one, one of the ones that I have dealing with senior issues. We, we're giving each candidate 15 minutes. Uh, and so I'm, I'm in charge of keeping charge of the uh, track of the time. And if we're getting close saying, oh, time to go. Um, so Chris, uh, with, with that said, take it away. I know that, and I think you, but I think you just answered Chris's first question, which is- You did answer the great. first question, Scott. So number two is what are your two or three items on your list of important topics you think the town uh, should address in the next three years or so, and how would you address those uh, concerns? Yeah, so, so number one for the next three years is going to be budgetary, uh, right? Uh, we're gonna be in a period of lower uh, receipts uh, in terms of um, the normal revenues coming in. Uh, we're, we're definitely, you see, as we finish up this fiscal year, taking any of the surpluses we have and rolling them into the, our reserves going into the next budget year. We're a little lucky in that, you know, three quarters of the fiscal year was complete. So the, you know, the current period was, was finished although it finished fairly poorly, we were in a good, good position. We're able to bolster things for next year. I think our budgeting for the next three years is going to be challenging. Uh, we'll roll into the next year with 
a much reduced budget. If you followed along with the, uh, the, the updates from across the board, right, in terms of schools, town departments, uh, capital projects, um, we've all reduced uh, what the planned expenditures are going into those years. Um, it was relatively easy, I have to say, to do that for this upcoming fiscal year. It's going to be the following couple of years that we'll see our revenues lag, whatever happens in the overall economy. So number one, kind of the fiscal challenges that we're gonna have going through. Number, number two, um, I think I've been, I've been struggling with a bit of division um, between residents in town. Uh, we've got um, some folks that are, are um, coming from very different perspectives and, and with you know, different, different priorities and issues. And so rather than see those discussions turn to debates, turn into arguments, you know, I think it's going to be very important to keep an open mind, uh, listen to all these points of view, and, and achieve that consensus to keep things going forward. I, it's, I don't have a, you know, a magic wand wave and say, hey, everybody, you know, let's, let's have the same ideas and the same priorities. I think what we have to do is be open and listen to each other and, and stand in each other's shoes a bit to understand where things are, are coming from and for the specific you know, issues or challenges, you know, what we can do to at least mitigate, but put us on a strategy to resolve for the long run. Great. Number three, Scott, so what specific skills and abilities will you bring to the town of Northborough as a selectman? Yeah, so my, my kind of personality in wiring, I'm, I'm a we mentality rather than an I mentality. Um, you know, in my personal life, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go through a hierarchy of what's right for me, what's right for my family, what's right for my neighborhood, what's right for the community. Uh, as a selectman, I'm gonna turn that around, right? I'm gonna look what's best first for the overall community and then look into those particular topics for the features that, that, um, that, that can be applied. And, and in many respects, I, I suppress, you know, my individual um, uh, 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 wants or, you know, something that benefit, you know, benefits me personally. So I, I turn that around. That's the way I'm wired. Uh, I, I, I took that approach in coaching youth sports. Uh, you know, we could, we could uh, win a championship and it was never about me, right? You know, it's about those players and their skills. I'm just in a lucky position to uh, help them get in the right place at the right time to apply those skills. So that's a little bit my personality. Uh, we joke, uh, Mr. Rogers, you know, and, and, and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and that's, that's applicable in that sense. <laughs> Um, you know, specifically my role in financial planning and my roles professionally in helping with uh, capital planning and projects. I'm a, I'm a project manager by profession, uh, an, engin an engineer by education. So uh, trying to get to uh, understanding of complex systems and what the dependencies are and how things can be optimized and streamlined, that's, that's my, my background per se. Um, my personality then has applied that into a, more of a community service role. Terrific. Okay, uh, number four. So true or false, Scott, uh, Northborough's property taxes are in line with the services that the town provides residents, including high quality public education and high quality town services, such as police and fire, the library and the senior center, Department of Public Works, Youth and Family Services, Parks and Recreation. What would you say to that? True or false? I say that's true. You can elaborate, and, by the way. You can elaborate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, ne next question? No. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, it's, it, and it's a balance. And, and I see some examples of how we're balancing that in, in the budgets that were just amended and revised. So a school budget 
you know, is amended to be reduced. And, you know, part of that action is, yes, a decrease in materials and, and line items in that way, but it's also a reduction in staff and, and some part-time educators that, you know, are impacted. Now, in some cases, luckily, you know, just not filling roles that became vacant because of retirement, you know, that's a, that's a happy outcome in that you're not, um, physically you're not uh, explicitly laying or furloughing current employees but you know that's 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 the 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 balance that we're at and so that reduction in school staff uh reduction in town staff with these proposed amended budgets right some part-time employees um chris you know the expanded hours at the library right was one thing that that didn't uh would would have the drop um Arthur, that, that implies some staff at the senior center, some part-time staff at the sen senior center too. So for me, that's an indication that our budgets are aligned with the services and personnel to some extent. Uh, I think there's um, similarly on the capital planning, you know, and, and some of our equipment that we would, we would have normally purchased this year, we deferred that. Uh, and one of the questions, you know, I made sure is like from a public safety perspective, did that put us in any increased risk for public safety, for public works? Did that impact any of the projects that were planned for the year? And they're not. So, you know, the, the good news there is we were able to trim that. I think that was uh, a, a very easy decision to make on the reduction in capital expenses. And, and as I mentioned that from a budgetary standpoint, that then feeds into our flexibility and capacity as we get into these next fiscal years in that it gives us more liquidity, more cash on hand to, to supplement some of the, the revenues that, that, that will be reduced. Great. Arthur, I think you, you're on for the next question. That, that leads into mine. Because so as, as, as you know, um, uh, Mr. Rogers, th this show is really designed to focus specifically on issues of seniors. Uh, and the seniors have been and continue to be uniquely affected by the COVID-19. By COVID so how do you think the town services for seniors should be changed or increased until a vaccine is found? Yeah, this is, this is tough. You know, my own family members that are, you know, in a place where you know, I can't visit, right? Um, so there's, I know there's a significant number of people that are, you know, in home or in other um, living situations where, you know, that's, that's, that's tough. You know, I've got the flexibility that I can, I can move around and, and get, get to things and still be somewhat isolated. Uh, I will uh, admit that I'm not as familiar with a lot of the services that are available. Um, that's a deficiency. That's, a, that's an area that I need to grow in. Uh, I, I was heartened by the, the, the comments and the reporting back from our, our senior center director and that as they made calls out to uh, all the seniors, and I think that was on the order of 4,000 some contacts, right? Yep. That, you know, generally across the board, folks were doing, you know, okay. I think continued contact, you know, and continued updates uh, is, a, is a good mechanism to periodically check in, especially with anybody that was, you know, looks to be at a higher level of risk. And, and uh, I guess this is an opportunity, too, to say that if anybody watching this now knows of anyone that needs some assistance, then contacting then Senior Center or Family and Youth Services to make sure folks get pointed to the resources they need or the help they need is, is important. Great. And, I, and I'll, just, I'll just kind of, just to close that question, you're, you're, you're fortunate in that, you know, you're, you're coming in, as into, you're hoping in for a new position. And you've got a wonderful and dynamic new senior center director uh, who was replacing yes. a person, yeah. or Liz Tridiak, who's replacing a person, Kelly Burke, who had been really terrific. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I, you know, we appreciate your honesty on that one. And as far as seniors are concerned, your, your ability to kind of understand those issues is going to be really important for the next couple of years. These se the seniors are the ones that are getting hit. You know? So, yeah. Chris, Chris I, I know that, you know, we've, we've, you did a great job on these questions. I think, I think that Mr. Rogers did a great job on the answers, and we're out of time. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we really want to, uh, uh, you know, thank you, Mr. Rogers, for being able to come on. Thank you, Chris, for, for figuring all of this out. Thanks, um, folks, we will be on with the next, with the other two candidates uh, next week uh, who are running for selectmen. And we will look forward to seeing you then on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in North Row, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.